Hello guys, thank you very much for joining in. Hi, this is Ganesh Nayak. I help financial professionals and students to excel in their career and become a better version of themselves and also help students who are appearing for FRM and CFA exams to clear it their first attempt. Now, this video is primarily a series of video which I've already done before in which we are basically talking to one of my students who has cleared the exam and in terms of how was he able to do it? What was his journey? What was his experience? What are the problems and challenges he faced? So today we have with us Aditya. And primarily, Aditya has been able to clear the exam in November in first attempt. So thank you very much, Aditya, for taking out time uh, to help us understand your journey. And It is my pleasure. And uh, for the benefit of the audience, uh, before you started FRM preparation, okay, or even decided FRM, what were you doing? What were you, were you working? What was the profile that you were into? Okay. Uh, so I am an engineer by profession. I passed out of my engineering college, NSIT, in 2020. Mm -hmm. Since then, I've been working in a high-frequency trading firm as a, as a technology analyst, uh, now okay. a senior analyst. So what my primary job is to write low-latency systems for which will trade automatically. Mm -hmm. I've also developed softwares on robo-advisory which uh, which allocate according to the risk profile which the person has okay so i have been working in this uh, in this company st advisors which is primarily a high frequency trading company for about uh, one and a half years now perfect and then you decided to go for the frm yes right so yes. when you started the preparation you had any finance background as such uh in my studies, I have never studied any finance, but in the company, I had to clear a few NISM certifications. Mm -hmm. uh, I had prepared for CFA earlier also. So I had a bit of knowledge about finance, but not okay. with my studies. It was just on my own. Perfect. Perfect. Now, why did you went for FRM? Uh, see, FRM to me, what I felt before was that FRM is a very quantitative heavy uh, certification to have. So me being from a quantitative background, which obviously only uh, screens stocks basis of quantitative analysis, risk management seems to be a very obvious choice for me to actually include it in a Python script or any C++ program. So having that quantitative knowledge with my coding skills seems to be a very good skill set for me. Okay. So that is why I chose to go for a risk management and particularly FRM in that case. Perfect. Perfect. Now, when you started out, uh, obviously looking at the background that you had, the engineer background, I'm assuming that the book too, which was quant was slightly easy for you, right? Yes. But yes. what about book three or book four, which is FMP, financial marketing products and valuation and risk model. What was your view before starting the curriculum? Yeah. Uh, talking about the quantitative book too, yes, that definitely was very easy for me. So I already knew regression. I already knew all the statistics, probability. In fact, I had studied from my school, then again in college, and then again in FRM statistics and all that. So I already knew all that. It was just a revision for me and mostly solving the questions. Hmm. Uh, so quantitative, yes, you are right, was very easy. Talking about uh, book three and book four, which were all finance based and something to an engineer, which is a new thing hmm. to me, it was not completely new. Why? Because in my field of uh, work, in my field of profession, I right. deal with options, futures, stocks every day. So I am already aware what, what these are at a very high level, okay. but yeah, I'm not aware of them at a very deep level in which FRM curriculum goes yes. into. Hmm. Yeah, and something that I faced difficulty was in the bonds because I don't deal with bonds or fixed income securities. So that is, again, something that I faced. Uh, it, for me, it was very difficult to grasp. What about VAR? But, yeah. Value at risk? Uh, VAR also, yeah, VAR and all those banking concepts also, those are also very uh, new to me. So, But still, th those were easy to comprehend. For me, the most difficult part to comprehend was only fixed income. Okay. Okay, got it, got it. Now, when did you start your preparation for November? For I had my November exam scheduled for 16th November 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, I started, uh, I had already uh, failed my exam about, say, in August. I, I just uh, enrolled for the exam in August. Mm -hmm. But I started my serious preparations in September end. 
so it gave me one and half two months to prepare okay now when you said that you're going to be starting out i think so we had a chat also when you when you were about to start the preparation right in terms of what should yeah. be the order and the prep because we had less time so we had to be very choosy in terms of picking up the topics and uh, setting out right. milestones so when you when you were sitting at suppose august end primarily right that is or september end basically that's what right. you said so was there any fear in your mind that will i be able to complete will i be not complete what is going to happen was there any fear you see uh, before august before enrolling for the frm exam i had already given my cfa level 1 hmm. so uh, one of the reasons why i immediately went for frm 1 was because i was all the cfa concepts were new to me and i thought that the curriculum for both of them would be same after looking at the curriculum for frm as well so according to me i had this uh, idea that both the since both the uh, curriculum would be same so i already know a lot of it Right. but later when i actually went into the frm curriculum i realized that no it's not the case a very few part is similar but it's hmm. actually very different hmm. so at the end when i started my preparation i was very panicking after uh, looking at it so that is why i said ki uh, uh, i can't prepare it on my own in such a short notice so i need to have someone to help me or guide me to the right direction so that okay. is why i enrolled for the course so which helped me a lot obviously because i cleared it with uh, all my with the first quarter in all the four okay. but that was it i was panicking at the two month mark okay so primarily okay now uh, when you started your preparation okay with me so which topics you started out first with uh i started out see uh, you told me to start out with the most with the topics which are of the highest weightage which obviously makes sense because uh, you need to do stuff which comes maximum which has the highest time versus return value for those chapters so oh. i started with book 3 particularly the topics related to um, if evaluation of futures options all oh. the futures concept all the derivatives ones right um, so i started with that after that you asked me to do the quant which i was already very uh, comfortable with so i completed the after that i quant so all these uh, subjects that you are i am telling you they were uh, just uh, it's the one week thing so i completed the book 3 k the strong chapters in like a week then i completed book 2 the quantitative one in a week and later you told me to start with book 4 var chapters hmm uh so i that too i completed in a week and later you asked me to do uh book 1 hmm. book 1 not all the chapters i actually left a few chapters in book 1 because obviously it has only 20% weightage and those chapters still have a very few weightage so i completed the capm uh i com- the most important chapter which i felt was uh, the uh that learning uh, from financial disaster case studies yes the case studies yes. ones the case study one was a very important chapter in the in the exam also there are a lot of questions were there from that chapter so anyone who is preparing for that just do that chapter very well from the curriculum from book one hmm. and the capm one also that was also very important and that pharma french one right 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 hmm. now obviously uh, uh, i the way of preparation that we had was very different because you had a very less amount of time and you had a very good background so you could have picked up picked up one 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 week so normally i don't expect students to be in that situation that you have to complete everything in one one and a half month so now when that happened when did you start so you were also simultaneously solving the question bank if i'm if i'm not right. wrong right right yeah so what why what my strategy for preparation was that first i used to look at the videos uh and then i used to solve the questions and after solving the question i used to tally if what my incorrect answer were and why were they incorrect and what is my and how could and what is actually the correct answer and just note the wrong answers okay for a few chapters such as quantitative i didn't even look at the videos i just went into the question directly because obviously i know the theory for that so there is right. no point going to the videos okay okay and then primarily uh you did solve the sectional test that we had and the quizzes and the mock papers how did you go for that okay uh so i finished i was 
done with most of the syllabus around 80% of the syllabus around November uh, 3rd to 4th. Uh, my exam was on November 16th. So around November 3rd to 4th, I was done with all the syllabus oh. with solving of the questions, particular oh. topic questions. So then you advised me to start doing the question bank. So I started doing the question bank every day. So I solved around four to five of the question, uh, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole exam. The mock the paper. Correct. So yeah, the mock papers. I completed uh, four to five mock papers in the exact simulated environment, like it would be on the exam day. Like I used to have that a uh, hundred minute mark for me. I used to get up at that time and just focus on that without any disturbance. Okay. So I did those. So I was able to score well in that as well. Wonderful. Wonderful. So primarily, uh, so you got very less time in the sense that from 4th of November till the 15th of November, you had time for that mock paper. Generally, people, right. they start, so one of the students had one month before he started mock. So that, that squeeze in time also, you were able to utilize it properly. So you were doing after the mock again, the analysis part connected to it, right? You were Correct. spending that yes, much definitely. more of time. Definitely. So if I, if it takes me four hours to complete the exam, I would take more than four hours to actually analyze what my mistakes were and make sure I won't repeat them again in the next, whenever that question comes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And you did not solve the sectional test. You did not solve the other quizzes, the smaller quizzes that we had. Probably because we were not having time. Uh, right? No, I did not do that. I just did the particular topic quizzes and then the direct mock papers in between. Uh, there was no other level. for. So quizzes. primarily, if you also did not have time to revise the entire thing. I did not. Uh, uh, no, actually I did it before doing the mock exams. I, okay. I, uh, I tried to revise the whole syllabus at least once. So I was able to revise it once, but I did a revision in like two days. So again, it was not a thorough revision, but it was something. And how much time uh, was the gap between two mock papers? Uh, one day. Okay, so, so you gave an exam on Monday uh, and then Wednesday was the second exam. Then I'll do it Wednesday, yes. So in that Tuesday, I used to revise. Uh, okay. To do in that one day. Okay, so primarily Tuesday was where you felt that there was a mistake then. So you would revise it likewise. Yes, correct. I would, uh, on Monday itself, after giving the exam, I would look at my, I would just check the paper and look at my mistakes. Just try to see how it could have been rectified. And on Tuesday, I would just go for the topics in which I thought I was weak okay. uh, by obviously looking at the exam. Okay. Now, when you went for the exam, four hours, what was that? What happened in that four hours? Okay. Okay. So on 16th November, when I went for the exam, uh, my, uh, my center, I, I am from Delhi. So my center was in Janakpuri. So first of all, there was a discrepancy in my center. Mm, so yes. I had received a mail of, uh, say, around November 1st or 2nd that my center has been changed to some place in Dwarka, where it was. I initially had scheduled it for Janapuri, but they told me they have changed it for Dwarka. So I, uh, I had a word with you also now what to do. You advised me to have a word with the GARP Institute. So I had a word with them. They told me that it was a... False alarm. It, they, it the center has they not, not been changed. changed. Yes. Actually, Janakpuri itself. Yes. So that was finalized, but still there was um, there was some confusion still, but it was still um, okay. Mm -hmm. So when I went for, for the exam to Janakpuri, uh, the exam is exam starts at ten I, ten, but I reached there at nine itself, and I was allowed to enter the center, and I actually started the exam at nine thirty by nine thirty. Okay. Uh, so 9.30 when I started the exam, I saw a few questions. So in the starting half an hour, I was not able to solve much. I was just able to solve uh, five to 10 questions because I was just getting acquainted to the uh, questions that there were. Yeah. I found the paper to be very theoretical, where I, whereas I was expecting it to be a lot more calculation based. Right. So that was something that, uh, that trumped me over there. I was surprised by that. Uh, so I, yeah, so I started doing it, but as I got into the flow after the half an hour mark, I got into the flow of solving it. So it, it became easier, a lot easier to solve problems. So I was able to match the options that they were coming. Right. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. So I was able to complete the whole exam. The four hour uh, is is a lot of time to actually complete hundred questions. And since they were all theoretical based, what I found tough was that the options were very close. You are not able. You are not sure that whether your answer hmm. is correct or not right. until that day of result comes. Right. Right. I've seen that. I've seen this feedback from a lot of students. Now, out of the entire hundred questions, were there any questions which you felt that you don't know the solution of this, or you not you're not confident at all on those questions? How many questions were there? Yes, definitely. Yes, there were actually around twenty questions out of hundred in which I was completely blank that I don't know what the answer to this is. I have studied maybe for some question I have even studied the topic. Hmm. For those questions, I was completely blank what the answer was. But still, I tried to have an educated guess on what the answer could be. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So basically, out of that eighty questions, you were pretty much confident on the content. The remaining eighty. I would say I was one hundred percent confident for about sixty questions. For around twenty more questions, I was somewhat confident. But for that last remaining twenty question, I was not at all confident. Okay. There were those were like guesses. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Perfect. So, primarily, when the result came in, what was the quartile that you had? I had the first quartile seventy-five to hundred in all the four sections. All the four subjects. Now, what was the reaction of people around you? Obviously, family and friends would have been happy. What was your reaction when you your office people are aware about it and your friends are aware about it? Yeah, they were they were very excited to hear about this. They were uh, congratulating me. Everyone was congratulating me. Even my office, I I had a word with my manager as well as in what can be my next uh, step towards this journey. So mm. he said to actually get into a more quant based role instead of technology based role to right. uh, complement my certification. Hmm. So that is the word I had with my manager after the result came out. So again, he was also very excited and happy for me. Uh, yeah, that's it. Perfect, perfect. Now, uh, if suppose somebody comes to you, he and ask, can you give me three tips for FRM exam? What would that three tips tips yeah, would be? Definitely, my first tip to him and the most important one would definitely be solve as many questions as you can. You would never be perfect with the uh, content, but solve the uh, solve as many questions as you can. If you are able to solve question, that's it. You that is the whole point of the whole exam that you should be able to solve the questions. So try solving as many questions as you can, and not just uh, by laying in bed. You have to actually be prepared for that actual day. So uh, try to solve it by sitting on a table and chair and simulating. Exactly how the environment there would be, so that you are not surprised that day on uh, right. how the questions are. So that is my first tip. My second tip is obviously to do those topics first, which are of higher weightage. Don't mm -hmm. give a lot of time on topics which are of low weightage, and they are costing you a lot of time to understand and all that. So, for example. Uh, the last two chapters, in fact, the last three chapters for quantitative book, the time series analysis. They are very uh, heavy chapters in terms of understanding. You need Simulation. a lot of background. You need, a, yeah, yes. you need a lot of background in mathematics, and you need a lot of understanding to actually completely grasp those topics. So, for those chapters, what I would suggest is for these chapters to leave for the end. If you have mm -hmm. time, then it's good to have those. But if you don't have time, don't waste your time on these topics because as it is, they are not going to affect your marks a lot but they will affect your time for preparation in which you could have done other important subject and other important topics. Right. And I think that's it with these two tips. I think uh, anyone can solve, anyone can clear the exam and yeah, obviously Perfect. be consistent. Don't, don't uh, stop <laughs> your preparation. Yeah. So no, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Consistency is very, very important, especially people who yeah. are going to be starting out for uh, exam to give exam in november very early so they need to have consistency but wonderful i mean yeah. aditya thank you very much for uh, sharing your experience with us and this is going to definitely help people who feel that it is not possible to give the exam in one month obviously you had some background but they can stretch out time they can prepare in four months five months and they can still go for the exam 
provided you have the consistency in your preparation and thank you very much for sharing this and this is definitely definitely going to help those guys who are going for the exam in the near future so thank you very thank much for sharing you. your experience thank you thank you so much